Hi guys, my name is Kat and welcome to this 10 minute medicine session on postoperative fever. Be sure to check out our website or YouTube channel for other post-op presentations that you'll often see as a junior doctor. What is post-op fever? So that's defined as a temperature over 38 degrees Celsius on two consecutive post-operative days or over 39 degrees Celsius on any one post-operative day. It's extremely common and I'm sure you'll see it in your surgical rotations. It has lots of different causes. So they're often split into the five W's, which correspond to different days postoperatively. So looking at this image on the right, we're thinking about wind, water, walking, wound, and wonder about drugs. So often people say in the first one to two days after an operation, you're thinking about infection from a respiratory source. Now, often you can have a fever after surgery anyway, as your own physiological response. However, if this is persisting over one to two days, start thinking about infection from the chest. So in surgery, the lungs are naturally deflated afterwards, as you might not be filling them up as well um, due to the anesthetic or you're in pain, so you're not expanding your lungs as widely, especially in GI surgery. Therefore, pain relief is really important after surgery to prevent this, um, to prevent this collapse and prevent um, a pneumonia occurring. In days three to five after an operation, you'd start thinking about a urinary source of infection. So that's your water. Um, this can often present in this time period. And then in days four to six, you'd think about walking. So a VTE, venous thromboembolism, um, causing an infection as that's when a PE or DVT is most likely to happen. In days five to seven, we're thinking about a wound infection and if the post-op fever is happening persistently after seven days after the infection, we start thinking about wider causes. Have, are there any drug reactions or transfusion reactions, for example? Have we had an unusual um, reaction to an anesthetic? It's important that we actually always consider all of these causes. It's just that these um, time frames are the most common ways they present. I've also put some other things here. So always think about IV lines or central line infections as well. Think about abscesses and collections and think about antibiotics that have been started that could cause a drug reaction. If you have prosthetic implantation, so for example, a mesh put in during an aortic aneurysm repair that could also cause a, um, a fever as sort of the physiological response um, to the mesh. Um, could it be a pyrexia of unknown origin? So we'd be thinking about autoimmune, inflammatory, or even neoplastic causes of the fever. Could the patient be an alcohol withdrawal? Um, this is a commonly missed um, cause of post-op fever. And it's important in your history, um, in your clerking, that you find out how much the patient usually drinks, um, as they could be withdrawing post-operatively. Um, less likely, but always consider a stroke or a myocardial infarction. Um, so what are we looking for in the history and examination? When reviewing a post-op patient, always look at the op note to see what operation they've had. Was it quite a prolonged operation? What sort of body part was operated on? Did the operation go well? Is there a plan for a relook in um, theatre? Maybe the operation was for um, sepsis in the first place, so maybe we're assessing something that was there preoperatively. Look at their past medical history. Um, if, if patients are immunocompromised or frail, this should be ringing alarm bells um, in your head as um, these patients are particularly vulnerable to um, post-operative infections. Think about things in the patient's history that could make them at a higher risk for a DVT or PE. So think about have they been very mobilized? Are they obese? Do they have cancer? Um, are, there, are they a smoker? Has there been a venous thromboembolism in family members? Then in your examination, you really want to be doing your A to E approach first um, and treating things along the way. Um, 
if they're febrile, the most important thing you as a junior doctor need to rule out when you're seeing them is, is this patient really septic and do I need to treat that? And that would become evident in your examination and observations quite quickly. Once you've ruled out that um, they don't need to be resuscitated quite quickly, I always do a systems check. So listen to their chest, um, check their urine output, look at their skin. Is there any evidence of a line infection or a wound infection? Do an abdominal exam, for example, checking for peritonism, especially in your post-op um, general surgical patients who might have had um, a bowel operation which would um, predispose them to an anastomotic leak as a post-op um, cause of pyrexia. Look at the patient's fluid status. So really good markers of fluid status are um, objective urine output, their blood pressure, their heart rate. Look at if their JVP is raised because um, that will really inform if you need to resuscitate them with fluids, how aggressively we're going to resuscitate them. Um, for example, in a frail older patient that's um, got heart failure or renal failure or liver failure causing ascites, we would be um, perhaps going for a slower infusion of fluid. So in terms of investigations, I split them into bedside, bloods and imaging. Um, so at the bedside, you can ask for observations, you can ask for a blood sugar, um, a wound swab to check if there's any um, microorganisms that have infected the wound, um, urinalysis and urine um, MCS. Take bloods, including blood cultures, FBC, use knees, CRP, which will show you inflammatory markers, LFTs, um, clotting. Take a lactate at the bedside and take a new group and save in case they might need to go back to theatre. Um, I've put lactate in capitals as it will give you a really good indication very quickly on that VBG of how sick the patient in front of you is and how quickly you need to escalate them to your senior. Imaging, so think about ordering a chest x-ray um, in your patient with a post-op pyrexia as the pneumonia is a very common cause um, of um, the um, pyrexia. And think about specific cross-sectional imaging um, specific to the operation they've had. So for example, if they've had a knee operation, you might wish to request a CT knee or an x-ray of the knee just to um, check that everything's normal there. In terms of management, um, so we're really in our ATE going through the basic things like putting on oxygen if their saturations are low um, and resuscitating with fluid if their blood pressure is low. Um, you can make someone feel a lot better um, that has pyrexia with regular paracetamol um, and IV paracetamol works really well in these patients. Use your local hospital guidelines to treat the patient with empirical antibiotics. So usually starting with a broad spectrum antibiotic if we don't know where the source of the infection is coming from and then honing down with a more specific antibiotic once we've grown things from the samples we've taken. I always recommend early senior review from your um, surgical seniors and involving the microbiologist for any advice on antibiotics to give. And lastly, I would always recommend serially reviewing these patients. If someone's um, very septic, make sure you do lots of interventions and then come back after an hour or two to see if they've um, improved. And that serial review will be really important and, um, and help you to see which way a patient's going. So thank you very much, everyone. And these are my sources.